In today's video, we're going to be taking a first look at the Grandstream UCM 6302 and doing a basic setup using the built-in setup wizard. Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and be sure to hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. So I'd like to thank Grandstream for sending me out the UCM 6302 for my review. Now, even though they sent it to me, they are not paying me or sponsoring me for this video. All of the comments you hear are my own. So the UCM 6302 is one of four new UCM 6300 series models. The new series is a high-end series of PBXs. It's a true enterprise unified communication solution and you can see on the left in this diagram it integrates voice, data, video and mobile devices. It has an increased capacity up to 5,000 users which you'll see in the next slide depending on which model you choose. It includes video conferencing, a Wave mobile app for communicating with all endpoints, a brand new and exciting feature is the UCM Remote Connect, which is Grandstream's cloud portal. It allows endpoints and users to connect remotely without having to use a VPN or set up any type of port forwarding on their routers. It has built-in high availability, and it also is built upon Asterisk 16. So if you like this type of content, please give the video a like. It lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing here on the channel. Now that being said, Let's get back to the video. So looking at this comparison chart, you can see how the UCM 6302 stacks up against its siblings. It can support 1,000 SIP users, 200 calls, up to 150 parties in an audio conference. It has two FXS ports and two FXO ports, three gigabit ethernet ports on the back. It does support router mode and switch mode. It has one USB 2 and one USB 3 and one SD card interface. And we'll take a closer look at that when we look at the item itself. It sports a 320 by 240 color LCD. It has a touch screen for shortcut keys and a scroll bar. It supports the following voice and video codecs. The power supply is a 12 volt DC 1.5 amp, but this unit can also be powered via PoE and the mounting options are wall mount and desktop mount. Inside the box, you get the Grandstream PBX, the wall plug, and a quick installation guide. Now the unit has a really neat form factor. It measures about 10 and a half inches side to side, seven inches front to back, and it stands about an inch and a quarter tall. On the top of the unit, you can see the LCD display. Here's the Grandstream branding. Along the side and along the bottom, you have buttons to control and get into the system. And here's a scroll bar on this side as well. On the front of the unit, there's not much. It's just a full-size SD card slot, a USB 2 port, and a USB 3 port. On the rear of the unit, in each corner, you have ventilation for airflow, a reset button, the 12-volt power port, the WAN port, the LAN port, and a heartbeat port for high availability, two FXS ports and two FXO ports. And if you're not familiar with FXS and FXO, it allows you to connect the old POTS lines or analog phone systems to the PBX. Here you have your grounding screw. And on the bottom of the unit, you have your options for mounting on a wall or the four feet for just placing on a desk or a rack shelf. And then here's your information here regarding the serial number and the model number. And it also contains the initial setup password, which we're going to be referring to in a second once we get this fired up. So enough about the formalities and looking at the specs. Let's get this unit fired up so that we can go through the basic setup wizard. So what I'm going to do is basically just take this Ethernet cable and power the unit up over PoE. So let's go ahead and we'll plug in the cable into the rear of the unit into the LAN port. And I could hear the fan spinning up and you could see the display has just come on.
Now the unit will boot up and once the unit boots up, it will display an IP address here and that we can enter that IP address into a web browser to get to the login page. So while the unit is booting up, I just want to say that this is the first time that I'll be setting up a Grandstream PBX. I am familiar with PBX systems. I have done a couple of free PBX systems, but this is my first experience using a Grandstream unit. And as you can see here on the display, oops, it just went dark. The display is showing the IP address of 192.168.50.37. So let's go ahead and get that entered into the browser. Okay, so we have the IP address entered into the browser. The default username is admin, all lowercase, and the password can be found on the bottom of the unit. Now, I took a picture of it because I really can't see that small print, so I'm going to be using my phone to enter the password. Okay, so you can see we're logged in, immediately launched the setup wizard, and the first thing it's asking us to do is change the old password. So let's get the old password entered in. And I don't want to use the strong suggested password, so I'm going to say don't use. I want to use my own password, so I'm just going to enter it now. And then it's asking for an email address, so we'll just do quicktechreview at gmail.com, and we'll go ahead and we'll click on next. And here we're at the network settings screen and you can see out of the box it's setting up the PBX in switch mode. You have dual mode and router mode, but we're going to leave it set to switch mode for now. I'll drop in a DNS server, just one of the public DNS servers. So I'm going to leave the IP method to DHCP for now since I'm just setting this up in a lab setting. But you can set it to a static IP if you're using this in production. So let's go ahead and say next. So it brings us to the time zone, and this is the correct time zone for where I'm located in North Carolina. We could select the date format. I'm just going to change that because I prefer to see the month first. And I'm going to change the time format to the 12-hour time. I'm going to leave it set to English, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. So this screen allows you to set up a couple of extensions right off the bat using the wizard. So you can see it's got a starting extension of 1,000, and if you try to change that, it tells you to enter a value between 1000 and 6299. Now, you're not locked into that. If you want, you can disable the extension range. And you see you get this message here. It says, these settings ensure that you cannot create extensions that would cause issues on the UCM. Disabling this feature is not recommended, but it allows you to proceed anyway if you want. So I'm going to cancel that for now. We'll leave that disabled, and we'll go back to starting at 1000 and I'm just going to create five for now and we'll use let it generate the random sit password now you can create 10 you can create 20 we'll just leave it set to five for now and click next here it's asking us if we want to add a trunk so I'm going to skip this for now because I haven't set up a service provider yet and now we're just at the summary screen reviewing everything we've selected in the previous screens We'll go down and we'll say save. So if you like this type of content, please give the video a like. It lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing here on the channel. Now that being said, let's get back to the video. Okay, so here we're getting the message from the system saying that it wants to reboot for the changes to take effect. Do you want to reboot the device now? So we'll go ahead and we'll say okay. We'll wait for the device to reboot and I'll be back once it's ready to go. Okay, so the system's rebooted and we're signed in on the dashboard. And let's take a look around the UI. So up here under space usage, you can see the partition information. Under resource usage, you have the memory usage and the current CPU usage. Under device storage capacity, you can see we don't have anything plugged into the USB 1, 2 ports or the SD card slot. Here under PBX status, it shows you the system time, the active calls, the remote users, if they were connected, the extensions. Now it's showing zero, even though we set up the five extensions during the wizard, we don't have any phones provisioned or attached to the extensions yet. 
So you can see we don't have really any information here because we just got this unit set up. Under the interface status, you can see the only thing that's lit up is the LAN port, so we have the Ethernet cable powering the unit. And then here under trunks, we don't have any available data because we don't have any trunks set up, but it would tell you here, blue is available, red is abnormal, yellow is busy, and gray is unmonitored. So hopefully once we get a trunk set up in a future video, we'll have some information here. Let's click over under system information. And then we have this general information about the system, the model, the part number, the serial number, the uptime, the version information. Then you have the network information, the MAC address, the IP address for IP4 and 6, the gateway, subnet mass, DNS servers, etc. Here you would see any active calls. Here's the network status. Under extension and trunk, here's where you would set your extensions. Now we already have a couple set up that the wizard took care of for us, but we don't have them provisioned to any phones, so that's why they're saying unavailable now. And in the next video, we'll probably provision a couple of phones and you'll see the status here change. You can set up extension groups. Here's your analog trunk set up, your VoIP trunk set up, your inbound and outbound routes are here. So all this is under extension and trunk. You have a lot of options under call features, like an IVR, you could set up an IVR. Now you all know what an IVR is. You might not have heard it called an IVR, but you've all called one at one point in your lifetime, I'm sure. That's where you call into a phone service and you get, please dial one for support, dial two for customer service, dial three for sales. That's an IVR. We'll probably do a video on setting up an IVR in the future. You can set up your voicemail, ring groups, uh, paging and intercom if you want. There's a lot of options here and that's all under call features. PBX settings, you have your general settings your SIP settings, and a whole bunch of other information like music on hold, voice prompts, etc. Under system settings, under HTTP server, you can see that you access the UI on port 8089. Under network settings, you have your basic settings here, your 802.1x settings, static routes, port forwarding, ARP settings, etc. OpenVPN, DDNS, security, connecting to an LDAP server, a whole bunch of settings here under system settings. Under maintenance, you have user management. You can see the super user and then the extensions that were created. You can change your login password. You have an operations log, a system log, a syslog, system events. Here you can do your firmware upgrade. Here we could do a configuration backup. Under system cleanup and reset, you can do a factory reset or a reboot. Under CDR, you have your call details. Now, if we had any calls, they would be listed here. Statistics, recording files. So under value added features, in the next video, we're going to take a look at particularly zero config and how to get a couple of phones provisioned and attached to extensions. So you do that here in this area. And then under UCM Remote Connect, we talked about that a little bit earlier in the beginning of the video. It's where you, it allows endpoints and users to connect to the UCM without having to use VPN or port forwarding. In this area here, you can learn more about linking your UCM PBX to the GDMS portal. So there's a first look at the GrandStream 6302. In the next video, we'll take a look at the zero config feature and see if we can get a couple of phones provisioned to the system. If you like this video, please. Give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos listed up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I know I say this all the time, but I want to thank all of you for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.